Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe now for future content. Please be sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. It will help my channel greatly, and it will help the performance of the video itself. If you want your true scary story to be featured on an upcoming video, email your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below as well, at the end of the video. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. The Velisca Axe Murder House in Velisca, Iowa is a well-known tourist attraction for ghost hunters and horror lovers alike. The site of a gruesome unsolved 1912 murder in which six children and two adults had their skulls completely crushed by the acts of an unknown perpetrator, was purchased in 1994, restored to its 1912 condition, and converted into a tourist destination. It cost $428 a night to stay at the old haunted home, where visitors always report strange paranormal experiences, such as visions of a man with an axe roaming the halls, or the faint screams of the children. But in November of 2014, the haunting took a darker turn. Robert Stephen Larson Jr., 37 of Rhinelander, Wisconsin, was on a regular recreational paranormal visit with friends when true horror struck. His companions found him stabbed in the chest, an apparently self-inflicted wound, called 911, and Larson was brought to a nearby hospital before being helicoptered to Creighton University Medical Center in Omaha, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office said. Larson suffered the self-inflicted injury at about 12.45 a.m., which is around the same time the 1912 axe murders in the house began. Larson recovered from his injuries, but has never spoken publicly about what occurred that day. For Martha Lynn, the owner of the home, the incident was very upsetting. It's publicity, but it's not exactly the kind of publicity you deserve to have. I don't want people thinking that when they come to the Velisca Axe Murderer house, something's going to happen that's going to make them do something like that. The house remains open for tourist visits and overnight stays today. When you think of haunted dolls, it's likely the creepy old Victorian looking porcelain kind that springs to mind. None of which you probably have laying around. Still, don't get that comfortable around any kid's toys too soon. Though, a Disney's Frozen Elsa doll that was gifted for Christmas 2013 in the Houston area made headlines earlier this year when it seemingly became haunted. The doll recited phrases from the movie Frozen and sang, let it go. When a button on its necklace was pressed, for two years it did that in English, Mother Emily Madonia said. In 2015 it started doing it alternating between Spanish and English. There wasn't a button that changed these, it was just random. The family has owned the doll for more than six years and never changed its batteries. The mother says the doll would randomly begin to speak and sing even when its switch turned off. The family decided to throw the creepy doll out in December of 2019. Weeks later, they found it inside a bench in their living room. The kids insisted they didn't put it there, and I believe them because they wouldn't have dug through the garbage outside, Madonia told KPRC2 Houston News. At that point, Elsa ceased to sing the English rendition of Let It Go altogether, speaking only Spanish when pressed. The family then double-bagged the bizarre doll and placed it at the bottom of their garbage, which was taken out on garbage day. They went on a trip shortly after, but when they returned, Elsa too had come back and was waiting in the backyard of their home. This time, the family mailed Elsa to a family friend in Minnesota, who taped the haunted doll to the front bumper of his truck. It doesn't seem to have made its way back to Houston yet, as per Madonia's last February Facebook update on the creepy doll. 
In 2016 in North London, 26-year-old Kennedy Eif began acting strange and aggressive, following a pain in his throat. He reportedly bit his father, threatened to cut off his own penis, and complained of a python or snake inside of him before his family restrained him to a bed with cable ties, in excessive force. As the BBC reported, the family then set about attempting to cure Kennedy through restraint and prayer over the next three days, the court was told. His brother Colin Eif told police, It's clear that this thing was in him, what we believed was a demon because it was not natural. It was clearly trying to kill him, he said. We had to restrain him for himself. It was clear if we didn't restrain him, he could have tried to harm people in our family. Kennedy Eve had been bound to his bed for three days without medical attention when his brother called emergency services, explaining that Kennedy Eve was complaining of dehydration. He appeared to have developed breathing issues and was pronounced dead at 10.17 a.m. As the Independent reported, while police were at the house, Colin Eve allegedly carried out an attempted resurrection by chanting and praying for Mr. Eve. All seven of Kennedy Eve's family members were accused of manslaughter, false imprisonment, and causing or allowing the death of a vulnerable adult. A post-mortem examination revealed over 60 wounds, including a possible bite on Kennedy Eve's body, and his father Kenneth Eve, along with his four brothers, sustained injuries as well. Kenneth Eve told jurors he ordered his sons to take shifts and use overwhelming force, but denied that an association with cults, occults, and secret societies played any part in the death. After a four-day jury deliberation, all seven family members were cleared of charges on March 14, 2019. Friends noticed that Danielle Harkins, a 35-year-old school teacher near St. Petersburg, Florida, started acting strangely in June of 2012, developing an interest in demonic rituals. Soon after, she was arrested for abuse of seven of her former students, as the Tampa Bay Times reported. Danielle Harkins told the kids they needed to rid their bodies of demons as a group gathered before dusk, Saturday, around a small fire near the St. Petersburg Pier. They should cut their skin to let the evil spirits out, police said she told the children. Then, they needed to burn the wounds to ensure that those spirits would not return. When Harkins held a lighter to one teen's hand, wind blew the flame out, police said. That prompted her to douse her hand in perfume before setting it on fire. The boy suffered second-degree burns, police said. Another teen was cut on the neck with a broken bottle. Harkins used a flame to heat a small key, which she then used to cauterize the wound. The police were notified because a friend of one of the students who participated in the ritual raised alarms. However, None of the students themselves told their parents about the event or would comment following the arrest of Harkins for aggravated battery and child abuse. Investigators said they've spoken to Harkins, but she didn't spell out what type of religion would require such drastic measures. She hasn't informed us exactly what she was trying to accomplish with this, Puets of the St. Petersburg Police Department said. Elisa Lamb was last seen on January 31st, 2013, in the lobby of the Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. She was vacationing through the West Coast, documenting the trip on her blog, and checking in with her parents every day. On January 31st, those calls stopped. Lamb had vanished. Soon the police were involved and her parents arrived to help with the search. They had nothing. That February, LAPD released elevator surveillance footage of Lamb before her disappearance. The footage shows Lamb behaving strangely in the elevator, appearing to talk with invisible people, peering around the corner of the door, crouching in the corner, and opening and closing the door. But what exactly is going on in this video raises more questions than answers. 
Theories range from psychotic episodes, to demonic possession, to unknown assailants just out of the camera's view. Around that time, hotel guests started reporting weird things happening with the Cecil Hotel water supply. The shower was awful, said Sabina Ba, who spent eight days there during the investigation. When you turn on the tap, the water was coming black first for two seconds, and then it was going back to normal. The tap water tasted horrible, Ba said. It had a very funny, sweety, disgusting taste. It's a very strange taste. I can barely describe it. But for a week, they never complained. We never thought anything of it, she said. We thought it was just the way it was here. On the morning of February 19th, a hotel employee climbed to the roof and used a ladder to investigate the hotel's water storage tanks. That's where authorities found the decomposing, naked body of Lamb, whose personal items were found nearby. After an autopsy, her death was labeled accidental. NBC Los Angeles reported at the time about the strange occurrences in the hotel's past. The tank has a metal latch that can be opened, but authorities said access to the roof is secured with an alarm and a lock. The single-room occupancy hotel has an unusual history. Night stalker Richard Ramirez, who was found guilty of 14 slangs in 1980s, lived on the 14th floor for several months in 1985. International serial killer Jack Utterweger is suspected of murdering three prostitutes during his time he lived there in 1991. He killed himself in jail in 1994. In 1962, a female occupant jumped out of one of the hotel windows, killing herself and a pedestrian on whom she landed. In February 2021, a Netflix doc called Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, explored Elisa's tragic case in the history of the cursed Cecil Hotel. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Email your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below as well. I hope everyone stays safe and has a happy holiday this season. Till we meet again, stay sinful.